Okay, we're going to do a little explanation of a very simple test. You can do, anyone can do. We do it um, for H4 bulbs. So we've been offered a lot of H4 LED bulbs from various suppliers who've seen our videos and stuff and said, would you like to promote our LED bulbs? And some of them are really cool. Um, but it's how do you evaluate which ones are good. So we've developed this highly scientific bucket. This, as you can see, is our headlight testing bucket. Um, and we've got that ready, we'll, uh, all will be explained. Um, so a H4 bulb, which is what we're evaluating, is um, used in a lot of cars. And it's basically, it's two bulbs in one. So it's got the main beam function and the dip beam function in one. So if you look there, the, the little piggy tail to the left here is the main beam. And that emits light 360 degrees all the way around. That lights up and you get light all the way around for main beam. But for the dip beam, it's more controlled. So you've got the same filament, but it sits with this little dish. And the little dish stops it shining light to the bottom segment of the headlight. And it only shines light up. Okay, so why does it do that? So... This is a, a headlight, a typical seven inch headlight. And I've drawn these lines, but if you look sort of behind the lines, you can see the markings and you can see it's asymmetrical. So this is a right hand drive headlight for the UK market. And the, the, the bulb needs to illuminate this area I've done. So it's more than 180 degrees, it's more than half the circle. Because this area here that comes down further, when you're on the driving, will illuminate the pavement. So let me just explain. So here I've done a little sketch of a typical UK road scene. And this is our car with our steering wheel. And we're driving on the left hand side of the road. We're driving in this direction, okay? Now we want the light, we don't want to blind the oncoming drivers. So we want the light to be flat, and then what we'd want it to do is to kick up on this side so we can see this little pedestrian here walking on the pavement. So that, the pattern, the way a headlight works, it sort of swaps as it goes through the lens. So it starts, so all the light that goes on the top here actually comes out down on the ground because of the way it reflects. So it's quite important when we get these bulbs to check where the light's going. So on a H4 bulb, the top pin is the fatter pin, and these two are the smaller ones, so we know it goes that way up. It's got three connections. Okay, we're gonna put that on there. This connection here is the common. Sometimes it's the negative, sometimes it's the positive. And then these two are your main and dip beam signal. So we're gonna put that in the bucket. And then if we put the dip beam on, all right, you will see, if you look from above, you'll, you'll, you'll see, we can see where the light goes to. If I wobble it, you'll see that the, there's a boundary here, and you'll see it comes all the way around to here. Okay, and we've marked this line on here with a H. We've got a H round on the side of the bulb. So that's the halogen, so that's our reference point. And you can see, if I take that out of there, it goes from the sort of 90 degree, the 3 o'clock, and it comes all the way around. Um, similar, to similar to that one, so it illuminates, it will be illuminating all this top segment, okay? So let's have a look at some LED bulbs, okay? Now, some of the, whoa, some of the early LED bulbs were pretty grim and they were this sort of style. Um, I wouldn't bother with these at all. But the newer ones now are getting pretty sophisticated, so let's pick this one. So it's got three high power LEDs on each side. That's the main beam, so you can see that will illuminate, and that's the top, so it'll illuminate pretty much 360 degrees. And then what it's got here, it's got a little cup, similar to the H4, if you can see that, and that's making sure the light goes up. So let's have a look what sort of light pattern goes. Now, it's interesting to know, all these LED ones are quite cool, they've got little grub screws here, and you can actually move the position of the light backwards and forwards, and you can rotate the light relative to this. So you can actually optimize the light quite a lot. They also have this, most of them have a similar design with a removable heat sink. So if you've got to put it in a small cavity, let me just show you this, this is quite cool. Because often you get the rubber, there's a rubber grommet on the back, a uh, weather seal. When you put that in there, you need to, you need to remove it. So what you can do is you can unclip this, okay? And then you can put that into the light. You can put the weather shield over 
and then you can spin the heat sink. It doesn't matter which way you put it on, but you can put it on it any way you like. Okay, but we're not too worried about that right now. That's just a, another thing to look at when you're looking at LED bulbs. This one's got three pins and this little connector. And then this little box of tricks here is the electronic driver. This is what gives it the correct current to make the LEDs work. Right, so we're going to put that, we're going to put the top at the top, I'm going to connect that there. They've got the same connector as the halogen, well done Ian, Ian's doing the filming and the, right, okay, so let's have a look. So again, we're going on dip beam, now you can see, right, there's a couple of things to notice on this one, so if we line the right hand side up with there, it's, it's going nearly as far as the halogen, but the thing we didn't like about this one is it's got this big dark section at the top. Okay, right, let's put the main beam on, and we didn't do that with the last one, but let's have a look where the main beam goes. So again, the main beam, it, you can see it's got more coverage, it's pretty good, but it's got a dark section at the top and a dark section at the bottom. Um, but generally it's okay. Now the other thing we've been doing is, um, a normal halogen bulb, if you put the main beam and the dip beam filament on, there's too much heat inside this glass case and the bulb will blow. And also you'll be drawing a lot of current through your electrical circuit on your car. The LEDs take far less power for the same light output. Do you remember what we tested ours at? Dip was it, one, one, uh, 1.5 amps or something, yeah. which is like 16 watts for the equivalent light output of 50 watts. So it's taking in the region of a quarter of the power. So. What we've asked for is why don't, when you go on main beam, leave the dip beam on as well. So rather than just having these three and these three, let's get all six LEDs on because it's not going to overload the electrics on the car. It's not going to get too hot. It's not going to blow. So, um, right, so let's have a look. We've got these glasses here. And let's see if this will work. It'll, so let's put the dip beam on first. And let's see if we can see how many we've got. Still bright. Yeah, that's three LEDs. Right, it's still too bright on the camera. Yeah. But then if we put the main beam on, let's see how many LEDs illuminate on this one. Yeah, so we've got them now wired from the factory so that all, all of them come on, which is another thing I would look out for. So, because you really want, when you go on main beam, as much light as possible. Right, so that's that one. Now let's see how this other supplier's light measures up. So again, they've all got this connector, so you don't need to change any wiring on your car. This one's got a slightly more complicated configuration. I don't know why. So let's just screw that in. Again, this one's got a slightly different sh shaped heat sink, but again, you can spin that off to get the weather shield on. Right, on this one we've actually got eight LEDs. So you've got four, which are the dip beam, and, and this has got a slightly different shield. It's not it's slightly further away, um, so we've got, totally, we've got 16 LEDs on this one, so this looks pretty neat, this one. Right, so I've got that there, so let's go for dip beam again, Ian. Right, so let's get that one lined up. Now this one's got a really good coverage, this is coming round better than the halogen, really. So that's really going to help with the kick up. And we've got a dark area, but not as not as defined at all as the as the other one. So we actually prefer this bulb. Um, and if we yeah, do the main beam as well. Yeah, and main beam, you see you've got 360 degrees there of, of pretty good coverage. Now what you might notice is, you, you might, I don't know if you can see this on the camera here with my hand in the way, but the top half is slightly brighter because you can see that those, you're on main beam, but those dip beam lights are actually giving you still that. Still on on this one as well. They're still on as well, on this one as well, which gives you the top half which on the road will mean you've got more light on the road. Um, so that's how we've tested them. Let's have a quick go, see if we can see all eight I don't on. Don't need those. Don't know yet. Yeah, you can see nice. that. You can see all eight. Dip. And that's dip, yeah, and that's just the four. So there we go, there's some testing. By all means, buy some bulbs, test them yourself. We're gonna stop this one. We're gonna put this one on the website because we've tested it and we think that's, that's pretty good. Good luck with that.